Good afternoon, boys and girls. I just want to let you know that this is how I'm feeling today before I read this book we're about to read together. It makes me very happy. It's Mrs. Carniff. Hi, everybody from Pilgrim School and any other friends tuning in this afternoon. So I'm going to read a book that was recommended to me by another teacher friend, Ms. Abels, as being one of her favourites. I'm wearing my favourite cap to read it. Reading is my favourite sport. And this book is about being yourself, despite what other people tell you to do. It is called Maurice the Unbeastly. I'm going to read about the author and the illustrator from the back flap. It's written by Amy Dixon. Amy Dixon grew up as one of seven siblings, so the only peace and quiet she ever got was inside a book. She rediscovered her love for picture books at the public library when she had her own kids. It was the one place she knew. They would all be happy and quiet. Amy is the author of Marathon Mouse and Sophie's Animal Parade. She and her husband Rob wrangle their four beasts in Clovis, California, where she encourages them on a daily basis to be a bit less beastly. Carl James Mountford, the illustrator, has been drawing, painting and generally making a mess since he was a kid. This hasn't changed much as he's gotten older. Born in Germany, he was brought up in the United Kingdom and he currently lives in Wales, where his sketchbooks rarely get a day off. Visit him at cargocollective.com slash Carl James Mountford. So I'm going to take the, the dust jacket off. It's easier when we're reading it. And oh, look, let's see, it's one of those. Here's the cover. Let me take the cover off. It's something else. So here's our front cover. And then when we take it off, the dust jacket off, that's our, that's our front. And this is the back. And this is the back of the dust jacket. So a nice surprise underneath. I'm just going to turn my fan on because it's getting a bit warm in my room here. Before I start to read. Okay. Maurice the Unbeastly by Amy Dixon. Here are the end papers. They are full of illustrations of monsters and ghouls and things. What can you spot there? What things can you see? Ooh, dragons and Medusa headed people, all kinds of stuff. Here's our title page. Maurice the Unbeastly, published by Sterling Children's Books. It was published in, let's see, we always, I always forget to say the, the date it was published in 2017. So it's only, if it was a person, it would be three. It would be going to preschool if it were a person. Maurice was not like the other beasts. His voice was as sweet and refreshing as dandelion lemonade on a hot day. He preferred his snacks green and organic and he was ridiculously photogenic. That means if you take a picture of yourself, you always look good in it, no matter what. So he's looking at his reflection and he looks fantastic. Mama and Papa Beast were concerned. Beasts roar, said Mama, and destroy, bellowed Papa. You must learn to be less civilized, Mama said. We are enrolling you at the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. Oh, he doesn't look very happy about that, does he? Maurice munched quietly on his kale kebab and mulled this over. He was a beast. He was supposed to be fierce and ugly and gruff. He didn't want to be a gargantuan failure.
So he tidied up his room, packed up his alfalfa fritters and headed off to the abominable academy for brutish beasts. You see what the little sign says as you come in? Hear us roar, hit the floor. We're the mighty carnivore. We've already kind of established that Maurice is a vegetarian. So let's see what happens when he gets there. Our first lesson, growled the headmaster, will be the frightening roar. The beasts responded in a chorus of terrifying shouts, except for Maurice whose voice rose above the rest in a perfect high A. Roar! A note went home to Mama and Papa. Maurice's roar is dreadfully melodious and delightful to the ear. Lesson number two, the headmaster snarled, is messy meat eating. The beast ripped and ravaged through the meat feast before them, except for Maurice, who placed a napkin in his lap and said, Excuse me, please, but is there a vegetarian option? Another note went home to Mama and Papa. Maurice is terribly neat and polite and we had to confiscate his alfalfa fritters. If those kinds of notes went home, your parents would be pleased to hear that you were being polite. And alfalfa, if you know what that is, is a kind of grass. Next, said the headmaster, we destroy each beast in the room crashed and crushed, wrecked and ruined. Except for Maurice, who dashingly dodged and stylishly sidestepped the mayhem. You're much too light on your feet, the headmaster scolded. Just when Maurice thought it couldn't get any worse, Picture day arrived. One by one, the beasts thundered through the line, their hideousness shattering camera lenses. Maurice was determined to get this one right. He growled and scowled, he snarled and howled. The photographer still captured the perfect glamour shot. One last note went home. If Maurice insists on continuing to smile, he will never progress. Maurice was beginning to feel as if the abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts was a gargantuan mistake. Just then, a ruckus erupted in the classroom. An unidentified creature had infiltrated the academy. Do you think there was a clue on the back of the book to what the unidentified creature might be? One beast roared, but the creature just roared right back. Another beast bravely tried to catch it, but she stomped much too slowly. All the beasts quivered and quaked. except for Maurice, who sashayed to the left and flashed his winning smile. Here, creature, creature, he sang. The creature stopped and looked with big eyes at Maurice. Maurice pulled a hidden alfalfa fritter from his pocket and held it out. The other beasts watched in amazement as the creature bounded over to Maurice and curled up in his lap. Ooh.
Teach us this creature magic, the headmaster said. And so Maurice was named the official creature whisperer of the abominable academy for brutish beasts. He was a gargantuan success. His paper, Coaxing Creatures 101, Using the Beast's Softer Side, won first prize in the school essay contest. He led a campaign to add kale to the lunch menu. Raise your tail for kale, kale on the menu. And he started the Academy's first a cappella group, the Barbaritones. Maurice was definitely not like the other beasts. Not an a cappella group is. Hmm. That's when a group of people get together and sing, mu sing songs without having the music behind them. And thank goodness for that. The end. And the end papers at the back are the same ones as at the front with all the, the um, creatures that are going to the school that he went to. So I really like Maurice the NBC and I really adore the illustrations. You notice there aren't very many colours and they're all kind of greens and browns and red. And where, when I was little, I used to go to Wales to visit my grandmother. So the author is now living in a place I used to visit every every summer. My dad and would take me there and my brother and I and I, my mum would visit with my grandparents in Wales. So I love this book and thank you, thank you, Miss Abels, for suggesting it to me because it is one of my new, new favourites. I really enjoy finding a book that I haven't heard of that someone that is a loved by someone else. So I hope that I'm getting to share some of my loved books with anyone who happens to tune in pilgrim friends and family and anyone else who happens to click serendipitously on my youtube channel all right hope everyone has a nice day it's wednesday before memorial day 2020 bye bye everybody